Before watching, check the description. There's a Bybit registration link there. It's my top exchange, best volume, liquidity and lowest fees. You'll save hundreds monthly just from this. Why use my referral link? You'll get a $10, $30,000 sign up bonus based on your deposit. Most of my followers get $100, no deposit? You'll still get $10 minimum. Big traders can earn up to $30,000 with required trading volume. Click here to see your potential bonus. Links below. Enjoy the video. In this review, we'll discuss Bitcoin's future, why, and what I'm trading now. Quite some time has passed since the last review. It was at the death cross when the 50-day MA crossed the 200-day death cross. Later, another serious signal came when the 100-day crossed the 200-day, but nothing fell. Bitcoin continues to trade sideways. Summarizing the crucial previous review, I'll share my thoughts based on that information. I mentioned that, despite a serious technical signal suggesting a trend change and possible strong decline, the market remains strong with no weakness. It won't fall, but continue to trade within this bullish flag pattern. This pattern forming on Bitcoin's daily time frame is currently trading for trend continuation. Our overall trend is upward. As you can see, what's happening confirms my words, thoughts and hunches. But before we continue, a quick note so you don't get alarmed. I've moved recently and for the first time, I can't use a mouse at my desk because it doesn't work well here. Because of this, I've never had a mouse pad. I borrowed one from my girlfriend, so I'm working with cats today. Please don't laugh, or just a little if you must. Let's continue. When the market is at its peak, in this case Bitcoin is flat, just under its all-time high. Let's say we don't see a bullish flag pattern now, just noting that Bitcoin is flat near its peak. This usually indicates market uncertainty. The price isn't growing or falling, it's in a range, but uncertainty. Traders can't push the price decisively in either direction, so buyers keep buying, but prices don't rise. Many sellers are active, so they start selling. They can't lower prices, though, as buyers are present. There's a balance between buyers and sellers in the market. What happens next? Let's mark the range like this, and here's its lower edge. We have one or two ranges. This common one shows fluctuations and high volatility. Then one day, this volatility breaks up. Price moves up or down based on accumulation or distribution, setting our trading direction. What's accumulation? Accumulation is a flat range where big players build positions. Distribution is a range where big players unload positions. As an investment fund manager with $100 billion, I can't just hit buy for crypto on an exchange. My bosses wouldn't allow it. So what happens in this case? First, exchanges can't handle such volume. Second, I'd lose money due to lack of liquidity for one hundred billion dollars. Even with one trillion dollars, no one could fulfill that order. The price would skyrocket with just one candle. And it turns out that I... That's how it works with one candle from my orders. So, I'll buy these volumes at various prices, current, high, and even ridiculously high. My average entry price will be terrible, and after I buy, the price drops again. 
Clearly, no one actually trades like this. If you want to test it, try a small cap coin with just $1,000. You'll lose most of it instantly, but you'll see a big spike on the minute chart before it drops back down. How do big players build positions? Obviously with limit orders, but with $100 billion, I can't just place one huge order in a single price range. Moreover, when it comes to investment funds and large sums of money, I cannot place orders on the open market. Each exchange has an OTC over-the-counter section where specific volumes are executed at a set price within a certain time frame. As a manager, I know my comfortable range for accumulating a position. So, if Bitcoin is at $60,000 or lower, that's within my ideal buying range. Obviously, the lower the price drops, the better it is for me. Let's say I set my range at $60,000 and below. Within that small range, I gradually build my position each day. On some days, there are many sellers causing the price to drop significantly, allowing me to buy at a lower cost. On other days, sellers are scarce, and the price starts to rise, possibly even moving out of my range. In that case, I wait for it to fall back within my parameters, and within a certain time, my position is fulfilled. The longer this period, the larger my volume, as the market can't quickly digest my 100 billion plus 10 more investment funds and 10 other managers with 100 billion each. Everyone wants to buy within a specific range. Let's say $60,000 and below, it'll take time for the market to absorb these volumes. This is how the accumulation period forms. Then comes the distribution period. It's like when I had $100 billion in Bitcoin, it tripled, and now I have about $300 billion worth at current prices. I want to lock in profits, but I can't do it in one click. I need to set a comfortable selling range and unload it over time as there are 10 other fund managers with specific prices to unload at. That's how we operate. I'm not just one person managing large sums of money. The fund has many managers who set prices, including risk managers and analysts. These are large structures that follow specific rules and act similarly. To sell quickly, not over 50 years, as I unload billions and trillions. If there are no buyers at these prices when Bitcoin enters this range, I'll sell and the price will drop. I won't be able to sell at these prices at all. I'll have to go lower. For this, we create liquidity pools, or whatever you want to call them, visible in financial media anytime. For example, the same CNBC and notice that when in the past Bitcoin was near historical maximums for some sustained time, there always happens some magical situation where some big talking heads go to financial interviews and claim that yes, Bitcoin is now worth $50,000 and I generally anticipate it to be worth a million dollars. Bye, bye, bye. Just posts appear in the media from ordinary journalists about the fact that generally, look, there are 15 reasons why Bitcoin will continue to grow, yet at least to at least $150,000. Those who are not especially led on this, for them another level of propaganda works. Allah, yes, look at this fool, he expects Bitcoin to be a million dollars. It is apparent to everyone that a million dollars will not happen. Bitcoin has significantly risen already and the fuel for its growth is becoming less, it will not grow more than $150,000. And here $150,000 is the place to fix. And people are like, wow, nothing to yourself, interesting information. Well, I'll buy Bitcoin for 50 and I'll fix what I'm talking about, okay? Conversely, if you check financial media when Bitcoin's at its lowest, interestingly, the only time I didn't see this on mass was in 2022. Maybe I wasn't looking at the right channels, but in any other period when Bitcoin bottomed out, financial media would trumpet that Bitcoin is finished, worthless, or worth only $3,000. 
Потому что такое биткоин? Это какая-то цепая монетка. Почему она вообще стоит денег? Или, uh, What is Bitcoin anyway? It's some kind of digital currency. Why does it have any value at all? Or more advanced analyses saying $3,800 is cheap, you should buy, but wait, it might go even lower. This lures in masses who follow financial media, typically people with significantly more money than the average person. Public opinion and consciousness are manipulated, leading to an influx of dumb money that big players and investment funds capitalize on. At the bottom, sellers rush in with dumb money. People buy, then panic when Bitcoin crashes, losing big even apartments. They wonder what to do. They think, let me get back at least $100,000 or $50,000 of my $300,000 investment. They hear it'll be worthless, but hope to recover $100,000 to pay off a car loan or something. At least they'll have some money left. This creates a liquidity pool that large players can exploit, either buying in or cashing out. This long explanation helps understand how the process works. There are certain signals you can spot by analyzing financial media. Looking at the current situation with Bitcoin near its highs, you'll notice something interesting in financial media. No one's urging people to buy Bitcoin or predicting sky-high prices. There are no buy now calls. There are no calls at all. This isn't coincidental. Previous publications, when Bitcoin was at highs or lows, had specific messages. It's all deliberate and paid for. Let's say I'm a big investment fund that bought $100 billion in Bitcoin. I built my position when prices dropped significantly. I managed to accumulate over time, and now I'm up by $100 billion on top of the previous $50 billion. My position is fully built, and I've got an extra $10 billion for marketing. And I'm pumping these $10 billion into marketing. There are 10 other big investment funds also spending billions on marketing. And one way or another, marketing works. It's not just financial media. I spent $100 million on financial media alone. So it's about Bitcoin breaking out of its downtrend, forming a bottom, and people starting to notice. Traders and bots see signals, start buying, and the market accepts the trend change and begins to grow. Near the peak, there's a media blitz to attract buyers so I can secure my billions. I stopped seeing buy Bitcoin posts when the Bitcoin ETF launched. After a while, similar posts appeared, then everything went quiet. The Bitcoin ETF was launched here. This happened at the start of this year. Actually, news about it came out last October. It's on this candle, if I'm not mistaken. On this candlestick, if I'm not mistaken, information appeared that the Bitcoin ETF would be approved. Then, immediately after, information surfaced that it was fake. A few days or a week or two later, we found out that it wasn't actually fake and Bitcoin ETFs were indeed coming. To be honest, I might be confusing the chronology here. No, this is where they were already launched and right after, the price fell further, starting a downtrend. Yes, Bitcoin ETFs launched here and this is where we learned they were coming. After the Bitcoin ETF launch, around this point, I stopped seeing such publications. I think it's because before the Bitcoin ETF approval, before this period, there was consensus among managers and market manipulators with big money that we were near the top. 
Right now, this hype about institutional investors entering and buying Bitcoin through ETFs traded on the US stock exchange. It's possible to gain a lot of liquidity from retail traders driving prices to the max up to 150% and unloading positions at local highs. And that's where the unloading took place. When Bitcoin ETFs launched, fund managers saw unexpected high demand from institutional investors. I think they revised their strategy and raised the target range for unloading, realizing there was no point in seeking exit liquidity from retail at that time. That's what I think, just my personal opinion. How I explain the lack of financial media urging buy, buy, buy at market peaks. Market manipulators with new info on national investors' crypto interest adjust their exit strategy. Mass buy crypto publications have stopped. This hasn't happened yet. Those who sold at local highs aren't triggering IT systems now. They likely see upward potential and stopped selling. The final sell-off might have been during this period. Once selling stopped and IT systems kicked in, buying resumed and prices soared. Plus, financial media stopped hyping Bitcoin, but the crowd's still trickling in. As you can see, the price has skyrocketed. Those who sold billions in Bitcoin at these prices now want to buy back in. For this, we need a flat or dip, ideally cheaper, but within reason. If we can't drop Bitcoin's price 2-3x to comfortable levels, another approach is needed. Okay, let's at least try to build a position in this price range. I'm looking at the current volatility and flat, which is actually a bullish channel. From a technical analysis standpoint, this is a beautiful pattern near the all-time high. It's remarkable how there's no market reaction to serious downward or reversal signals. Even with shocking news like Japan raising rates from negative while markets fall, Bitcoin drops sharply too. The asset is being bought back at record daily trading volume while simultaneously showing exit signals that can't be ignored. Meanwhile, it's still being bought at record volumes. Interestingly, financial media stopped hyping Bitcoin purchases to retail investors. All this suggests that the current flat trading and bullish channel might be a period of accumulation. My trades and make trading decisions. It's actually called smart money hype, and there are strategies related to it. You've probably heard they've been very popular in the last couple of years. I'm skeptical of these strategies, but from what you've heard so far, you can see I've always traded using some smart money principles. I've just described the main ones, how they physically occur in the market, why prices move in certain directions, and how the dumb money crowd behaves and when they're baited. There's no call to buy anything here, as it's not profitable for managers if retail investors join them. It's actually beneficial for them to fix and dump their positions, which is exactly what happens near all-time high, when prices have risen significantly. By the way, institutional investors are also exiting here. If you look at the cash flows into ETFs approved and launched 
launched by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, you'll see this trend. Money has been flowing out of these for many weeks now, meaning institutions are selling at this point. Who's buying then? Those who buy at record volumes even in critical moments, when analysis suggests it's time to give up. And those who've stopped encouraging retail investors to buy, moreover, media influences institutional investors even more than retail traders. All of this is interconnected. The market works as a single machine and nothing happens by chance. All trends and tendencies are visible and can be analyzed. Based on this info, I think they'll push Bitcoin higher once they've built a big enough position. How much higher? I'm not sure. I expect you'll hear about the Santa Claus rally by year's end. You'll hear, sell in May, go away, buy in October too. October is historically the strongest month for markets and Bitcoin. I analyzed from October to May, actually through August. That's when the crypto market and markets in general see the best movement historically. You'll hear all this once the chart looks something like this. By year end, I expect at least an all time high during the Santa Claus rally, maybe 120K or 150K. Okay, we'll watch the market at those upper prices and sell at the right moment. So this applies to long-term movements and trades. As I said at the start of this video, I'm currently trading based on this. I'm not great at trading in a flat market because I don't like strategies that involve selling near the top and buying near the bottom. Instead, I make most of my money from breakouts, typically. When prices sharply rise or fall, I don't mind. What matters is that there's a clear direction, up or down, rather than high volatility with no movement. That's when I make good money. This is what I teach on my channel and in my courses and training programs. There are strategies for making money in flat markets, but I don't use those. I'm just waiting for the next trend movement where I can profit on the larger time frame. I'm expecting it to go up. Of course, if it goes down, I'll spot it early, take a position, and maybe share it here and on my Telegram channel. Still, I'm prioritizing an upward scenario. Meanwhile, instead of sitting idle, I've switched to small frames. I suggest you do the same if you're not trading in a flat market. If you are trading in a flat market, continue trading trading within this range. The main reason I don't trade flat and why most people I know who do aren't profiting from trends is they miss growth opportunities and might even lose money on trend movements. At the very least, they're missing out on potential profits. In my view, it doesn't cover the emotional aspect. Flat trading, though it's pretty simple, buy low, sell high. Well, that's not really what I do. If you do it, you can do it that way. If not, why sit around doing nothing? Look at what you can do instead. You can trade on smaller time frames. If you trade $100,000 on larger time frames, allocate $5, $10,000 for smaller ones. If you have the desire and free time, monitor markets throughout the day. Just open a 5-minute chart. Not with your full $100,000, but with $5,000 or $10,000 on smaller time frames. Let me share my recent trade and some future ideas. Well, it's clear that these ideas I'm about to share will be relevant very soon, as I've just switched to a 5-minute time frame. What I said earlier in this video will be relevant, I think, for the next few years. The info is super cool and important. By the way, I hope you'll share this with your friends who are into crypto trading. If you disagree with some points, discuss it with them. If someone agrees, it's a great topic for conversation. You can also write your questions in the comments. I'll use them to plan my future videos. So, we've gone a bit off topic. I was trading on the 5 minute time frame last. Let me show you the cash. Here it is. Let's look at the hourly chart first to see the patterns. 
Oh no, not Zcash first. Uh, let me show you Trust Wallet instead. Yes, here's Trust Wallet. I'll show this first. One of my recent trades was DOT. I traded DOT at a breakout level. This is the level where I went long at its breakout. The potential was clear to the naked eye. How so? A drop forming a bottom pattern. I haven't drawn it here, right? Let me show you how this works in the short term. There's a specific level trend and another lower trend level that breaks. Price changes direction, trend goes up, visible in moving averages too. Price breaks level after level, mirror levels work, dips get bought, confirming the trend. Now we see a clear bottom pattern formed with the nearest tradable level. This moment could lead to a breakout. So there's a chance I'm seeing a pattern like what I'm showing you now. This is not always an entry point, not always the right moment to buy. I could buy, but then it might just update and the price could collapse back down. How can we be 100% sure if the price will keep falling or if this pattern will make us money and put us in profit? It's quite easy following the algorithm I'm about to explain. I actually opened this trade as an example and I made good money on it. My take profit was a bit higher here and the price almost reached it. I left the take profit order just below this level. The price nearly hit it, then started dropping, so I manually exited and covered. I didn't reach my original target, but still made a nice profit from it. So, how and why did I notice this opportunity? This actually works on higher time frames too, but on lower time frames you can see and test it practically every day if you use this take profit algorithm. Let's scan the whole market, and to give you a clear view, I'll set up a 5 minute time frame. On the left, I'll open the chart where I took a position to break this level. And on the right, let's look at Trust Wallet. Yes, Trust Wallet, not Zcash. Here it is, Trust Wallet. The breakout occurred at the time of the trade. I have marked it right here. Take a look. Let me go back to the hourly chart first. This is the moment of the trade. Look, there are different patterns, but our goal is to spot momentum and see which way the market's moving. If we see a bullish pattern with price approaching a key level, we want to know if it'll break through or not. And if it does, is it a real breakout or a false one? We're just observing the market to see if there's strength or not. See, it's dropping, then suddenly shoots up vertically. That's my trade. At that moment, you see the crosshair? That's when I saw a potential good trade. Uh, potentially a good trade. I see a vertical takeoff, a vertical buyout, and there's power here. Okay, good. Uh, Trust Wallet has been recorded. Let's move on. GMT. GMT, here's my trade. Before the trade, I see GMT is up 36%. It's also just a vertical takeoff. The pattern's a bit different, but the power is definitely there. And it was there for GMT long before my potential trade, but the power is present. On the left chart, before I opened, there's pressing to levels, trend changes on small frames, and pressing to the level I bought from. I opened this on the hourly, traded on 5 minute charts with a tight stop just behind the nearest level, max through the next level. It was a good place for a stop. As you can see, the price didn't even come close to it, staying out of the negative zone. There's a sharp vertical rise just before my trade, pushing the price to its upper limits. So where exactly was this trading moment? It was, let's say, around here at these levels when the price was near the... When I'm considering whether to enter or not, it's right here where the price has returned to its peak. You understand, right? There's strength here. Let's move on. It's exactly the same pattern, absolutely. It's very similar to what we see with, which made me wonder, should I buy or not? Here too, we see a straight vertical rise. If we see mixed market movements, with some coins soaring and others plummeting, it's not worth a 50 50 its bet. It's far from certain the market will grow or that other coins will show strength. I've shown examples of vertical takeoffs, but no reverse cases. No coins are drawing such patterns now and crashing hard. 
валятся, обновляют дно. Их паттернов нет. These patterns don't exist. This greatly impacts decision making. It's key to watch small time frames. I've profited from this recently. Now let's look at coins with interesting patterns using this info. For instance, Zcash isn't fully analyzed yet. Let me show you. Level, bottom, trend, trend bottom, trend change, breakout, step-by-step -step moves. Plus there's an ascending triangle. Everything looks good. The bottom pattern could extend. Some might see a head and shoulders. So the question is, buy or not buy? Here's the breakout potential. To take or not to take? Okay, let's note that Zcash has great potential and an excellent pattern. Moving on. Go. Similar situation. Triangle levels, rising lows, bottom breakout. Identical pattern, no need to explain. Question is whether to take it. Breakout potential exists. Alright, let's continue. Stellar XLM, it's slightly higher. If Go is here now, we'll ignore the right part of the graph. There you have it. Oh, and this is the same. Let's look at what we've been watching. Oh, here it is. Growth, fall, volatility, but no level breakout yet. We're watching XLM. Here's the growth, fall, and level. It's already broken through. Even so, there's potential for further movement. Notice the level, ascending lows, step-by-step -step bottom, all clear. Plus, there's a good uptrend here, within which trend where you can buy on the next breakout. To buy or not to buy. All right, let's move on. Waves. For example, the breakout happened. Similar pattern, for instance. It's the same for MSGO right here. Up, down, trading below the peak. Will it break or not? It did. Just a vertical move. It's down now because Bitcoin's falling. If Bitcoin falls, this will drop too. It's retesting the mirror level. During retest, watch waves too. I'm showing this as an example, not to buy waves. Let's continue. Pepcoin, peak, fall, lower trading. Same as OGO, for instance. Here's the level. OGO is right here. Look, breakout happened with barely a dip. Just a small correction, then vertical breakout. Let's check comments for more examples, like KKB. This applies to both the last trade and now. See this takeoff? Lots of alt power here. We're seeing record volumes, look. Not saying these will moon, but market's strong. We're using 5-minute frames to find entry points. Ideally, enter on breakout retest with tight stop. Some might enter early using nearby levels for stops. It's best to place one at a time. Yes, there will be more stops, but regarding my trading strategy and what I tell all my students, place one at a time, you won't go wrong. Yes, you'll pay more if the trend changes, but you'll have far fewer false breakouts, false entries and much less stop-loss triggering. There's potential, not for huge gains, but on futures with a small portion of your total balance. If you have a large balance for big time frames, great. If your balance is small, don't bother with large time frames. What's the point in earning 50, 100 yearly on large time frames using 4-hour or daily charts? If your balance is, say, $3,000, earning $1,000 or $1,500 a year is peanuts. Instead, take this balance, trade on small time frames, and don't aim for excessive gains. Just aim for a modest 4, 5, or 6% profit. Let's look at another example of such a takeoff. Take one trade with such potential. For risk management, use your own judgment. I won't advise as it's personal. Each trader has their own leverage and risk tolerance. Set tight stops near levels or further out as you see fit. 
I can only offer general recommendations, so take it cautiously. With this movement, even with leverage, you'll likely get a good result. Look for these kinds of movements. You can now trade Zcash, Omisgo, XLM and Stellar with clear stop losses. Of these coins, Omisgo has the most questionable pattern. Now Stellar Zcash looks good. Clear levels, obvious stop loss points holding well above these levels. Omisgo, however, has high volatility. You can see it fluctuates about 2% up and down. This means wider stops and there's no clear level boundary. Of the three examples I've given, this is the least reliable. Anyway, Stellar, XLM, is worth trading soon on small time frames. This review was lengthy, I'll try to post more often. The long review is because I haven't shared much info lately. I'll post more frequent, shorter reviews. Subscribe to the channel and check out our Telegram link below. I recommend trading on the exchange. Links below. You'll get a sign-up bonus, at least $100. Grab it. Thanks.